Welcome. Today I'm going to walk through a basic switch configuration utilizing the Cisco iOS as well as the Force 10 FTOS command lines. You'll notice as we walk through this, the structures will actually be very similar to each other. In fact, we'll only see a slight difference at the end whenever we go to configure our VLANs. So in order to kick off, I'm going to go ahead and start out by setting the date and time in each one of these switches. Now, if I'm unsure of what the appropriate command is, I can hit the question mark and inside of each one of these menus on there which will pull up a list of the available commands. I'll go ahead and hit the Q key to exit out of that. And then I can see on here that clock is the command that I'm going to be looking for. So I'll go ahead and start with the clock command. And then I can also use the question mark again to see the rest of the syntax that the switch is looking for whenever I input that. So as you can see, the only thing I need to do now is add the actual date and time. And then that'll set it for the switch. I'll also do the same thing on the Force 10 switch. Um, just to show that there's a, still the same type of capability in there, we'll use the question mark key and then again enter in the date and time to get it set on the switch. Now from this point I'm going to need to jump into our actual configuration mode to do some higher level commands. To do that I can hit the configure and if I hit the tab key as I'm typing a command, the uh, command line will actually complete the rest of the command for me. So configure and in this case we'll do terminal for the Cisco switch. And again, on the Force 10 switch, I can just type CONF and hit enter, and the switch recognizes the rest of the command for me. Now, in order to make these a little bit easier to identify, I'll go ahead and use the host name command, and then we'll set this one up as Cisco iOS, and then we'll go to our Force 10 switch, and we'll use the same command, except we'll call this one Force 10 FTOS. And now the next thing we're going to do is enable logging so that our syslog server can start receiving events. We'll use the logging command and then put in the IP address for our syslog server in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and also set up the domain name that we're going to be operating under. I'll use the IP domain hyphen name command and then we'll use ABC Corp dot local as our domain name and again we'll do the same thing over here on the force 10 switch now that we've done some of the basic configurations I want to go ahead and jump over to one of our ports so that we can start utilizing that for switching activities so in order to interact with the port I'm going to use the interface command and then tell it which of the ports that we want to utilize. In this case, it'll be our first gigabit port on the switch, or port 01. Once I'm inside of that, the interface for that port, we can go ahead and identify this as a switch port with the switch port command, and then we can go ahead and activate the port with the no shutdown command. And you'll see over here on the Force 10 switch, we're going to operate with it the same way. We we'll use the interface gigabit 01, We'll go ahead and set this one as a switch port, and then we'll use the no shutdown ag command again in order to bring that port up. Once we finish with that actual interface, we can exit from its menu. And then I'm going to go ahead and set up a loopback interface with the interface loopback command, and we'll set the loopback as 1. And then the next thing we need to do is assign an IP address to that interface. We'll go ahead and use IP address of 10.10.11.1 and set our subnet mask as well. And then finally, on both of these, we need to go ahead and bring up the interface utilizing the no shutdown command again. And finally, we will exit out of that interface. And the next thing that we're going to do is just set up a basic static route. Um, in order to do that, I'll use the IP route command and then type in the IP addresses that we're going to be setting up inside of that route. And again, we'll go ahead and do the same exact thing over here on the Force 10 switch. Now the next thing I want to do is enable my system for remote access. So what I'm going to actually do is assign an IP address to one of our interfaces. So we'll go back into our interface menu. 
and we'll utilize gigabit port 02. And then we will set up an IP address for the interface. We'll use IP address of 10.11.11. .11 .11. And then our subnet mask as well. And then again, we'll do the same thing on our force 10 switch. After we have the IP address, we'll exit from the actual interface and then we'll set up our user credentials. So in this case, we'll give ourselves a username of admin and then we'll set up our password as password. And now the final thing that we're going to take a look at here is going to be our VLANs. Um, now in order to set up the VLANs, both of these systems will operate the same way. So I'll set up an interface, VLAN 2, and then we'll set a description for that of servers, and then we'll set an IP address for our VLAN. And finally, bring the VLAN up using the no shutdown command. Then again, we'll do the same thing over here on the force 10 switch. Set up our interface, VLAN 2. And then we'll give it a description of servers, an IP address of 10.10.10.1, and then our subnet mask. And finally, we'll do the no shutdown command in order to bring the VLAN interface up. Now this is where we'll see a slight divergence from the two command lines. Um, with the Cisco interface, what we need to do is exit out of the VLAN interface, and then we need to enter into the interface for the port that we want to add to the VLAN. So I've exited out, and now we'll go into the interface, gigabit 01. And then I will tell it that we're going to set this switch port to access VLAN 2. And from that point, the port's been added into the VLAN. On the force 10 switch, we're actually going to stay within our VLAN interface in there. And then all I'm going to do is tell it that we're adding in an untagged gigabit interface 0 0-1 and that will add the port into the VLAN for us. Um, really, that'll just be the biggest divergence that you'll see as we're operating through the different configurations between iOS and FTOS on there. I'd like to thank you for joining me today for this short demonstration. I hope that it's been helpful. Thank you, and have a great day.